All right, welcome back again. Um, this time we are looking at calculations in a parallel RL circuit. Just a quick reminder, um, we're going to do the full complement of um, videos for our parallel RL circuit to include calculations, um, shorts, opens, and all the different changes in frequency as well as a brief uh, section on just error logic. But when we get to the RC, we are going to leave out the shorts and the opens, and that is because the theory is the same on our pure parallel and our pure series, whether there are inductors or capacitors in them. So um, learning the theory once is going to be fine. You can apply that to both types of circuits. All right, and so calculations. Let's start with the inductive reactance of L1. And you'll see the formula just went up on the screen. And the inductive reactance of L1 is 4.52 K ohms. And the inductive reactance of L2 is 3.17 K ohms. So these are in parallel. We're going to combine our, our two inductive reactants to make total inductive reactants. And we're going to use this with our inversion formula. And so we take 1 over 4.52 K ohms plus 1 over 3.17 K ohms hit the equal sign and then do 1 over that equals again and you should get your answer of 1.86 K ohms. Alright, now that we have a total inductive reactance, we can look to find a total ohmic value for our circuit or impedance. Now of course impedance in parallel is going to be a little different than your impedance formula in series because um, again you're inverting when you're adding adding, I put that in quotes, in parallel. Um, so we're going to take a look at that formula real quick. Don't be intimidated. It is kind of a, a tricky little formula, lots of little pieces. Just remember your order of operations when you're doing it. And so I'm going to throw out those numbers in here for it. So I put our 9K, which is the total resistance in this particular circuit, and our 1.86K, which is total inductive reactance for the circuit. When you are doing order of operation, you're going to take um, what's in the parentheses and do that first. So you're going to do 9K um, X minus 1. Now, if you were putting this into your calculator, I found typically the easiest way to do that is to include the parentheses and then put the squared. So the whole part underneath the, um, uh, the square root, you can actually do as 1... Um, one entry into your calculator and then you can hit the equal sign square root equals again and then one over that and you will get our total of 1.82 k ohms and if you'll notice um, we are in parallel so our total is less than our smallest value and it is indeed our smallest one was the total of our two inductive branches of 1.86 k ohms and our impedance is 1.82 K ohms, so it is smaller than our smallest value. All right, next we do current. Current super easy. We just take a voltage divided by the impedance, and that gives us our current of 6.59 milliamps. All right, now that we've got that, let's take a look at the individual branch current. And much like when we were doing our parallel circuits with just resistors, um, I'm going to show you here that when we do um, our RL circuits, we also have a formula to combine our currents to create a total current. And then if you're really intimidated by that impedance formula, you can do the total current formula first and then take voltage divided by total current to get impedance. And you can also use it as a double check. All right, so back to current. Branch 1, we take voltage divided by the resistance of branch 1, and we get 1.33 milliamps. For branch 2, again, voltage divided by inductive reactance, and we get 2.65 milliamps. Finally, branch 3, same process, and we get 3.79 milliamps. I want to take a minute right here just to stop and take a look at our um, three branch ohmic values. So each of our branches have an ohmic value. R1 has the largest of 9K. Um, L1 is kind of in the middle at 4.52K. And L2 is at the low end of 3.17K. And you will notice that the currents for those branches 
are inversely proportional to those ohmic values. So where you have a larger ohmic value, you have a smaller current, just like when we had parallel circuits that were all resistors. So similar, similar concepts. Just because we've gone to RL circuits doesn't mean we throw everything out the window, right? Well, many of those concepts that we learned, we are still using. All right. In, an, in a pure uh, resistive parallel circuit, we could just add all those currents together because they were all the same, right? They were all in the same phase. But now, in an RL circuit, our current through our two inductors are actually lagging. Remember Eli? So um, they're not in the same phase as the current through the resistor, so we can't just add them all together. What we do is we use this formula of the current through the resistor squared plus the current through the in total inductor, inductor, so if you have multiple branches, and that would actually be true for resistors too. If you had multiple resistive branches, you would add all your um, currents through your resistive branches together and all the currents through your inductive branches together to get those values. All right, so in this case, we have 1.33 milli, right? And that is the current through our resistor. And then we add 2.65 milli to 3.79 milli to get 6.44 milli, which is what we put down as our current through our inductors, total current. All right, if you're putting this into your calculator, you should be pretty familiar with this. You can separate that square root out by some parentheses, or you can just do 1.33 milli squared plus 6.44 milli squared equals square root equals. Either way, you will get total current of 6.59 milli. And no surprise here in our RL pure parallel circuit, especially with each branch having only one component, um, just like when we had a pure resistive parallel circuit, each of those components voltage drops are going to be equal to applied voltage. So um, R1 is 12 volts, L1 is 12 volts, and L2 is 12 volts. All right, and that is it for our parallel RL circuit calculations. Um, next, we are going to start looking at increases and decreases in um, frequency.